Hello everybody, Carlos here. So in today's video, I'm going to go be going over how can you invoke commands using Posh SSH against a given target. In this case, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be performing the demo against the printer behind me. That printer actually runs Clipper, a software that runs on a Raspberry Pi on top of Linux, and that is what actually controls my bar and printer. So let's go over and let's look at the demo of Posh SSH running commands against that 3D printer. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is that we're going to be creating a session. So I'm going to be using new session against the IP address of the printer. I'm going to be using the credentials for my account, Carlos. Enter my password here for the 3D printer. Now the session has been created. Now, if we want to look at the commands that we can use to invoke actions against a given target, for that, we're going just to use get command against the posh SSH module, and we're going to be listing all of the commands where in the verb, it contains the word invoke. As you can see, I have one called invoke SSH command, another one invoke SSH command stream, we have also a couple of ones for expect actions. And I'm going to be going over the differences between each one of them, what are some of the caveats, and some of the complexities when it comes to leveraging the module and what the library that I use, ssh.net, provides me that I make available to you via the PowerShell module itself. Let's clear the screen. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a help command against invoke ssh command. As you can see, the main differences between one and the other is that I can specify a session ID or I can just specify a session object. I have options to specify the command, timeout. I can even give different colors to the different streams for error, standard, out, or whatever. Or you have quite a bit of options here that are provided just by the command. I always recommend that you look at the help for each one of the commandlets. I do include help information for each one of them. In addition to that, in many of them, I actually provide examples on how to use the module itself. So now what we're going to do is that I'm going to be doing the command uname minus A against the host itself. I'm specifying the session ID in this case. And as we can see, we're running against Linux. The name of the machine is Voron, which is my tree printer that I have behind me. It's returning an object with multiple properties that I can look at what it's getting returned to me. In this case, the output is just an array uh, where each line of that output is an element inside of that array itself. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking at the environment variable, I'm going to be expanding the property of output. One of the things that you can see is that in this case against Linux, it's running against batch, it's a session of TTY, it is including the SSH connection information as I connect it to this Linux host itself. Now, one of the caveats when it comes to using invoke SSH command is that it doesn't retain state. The way that the ssh.net library exposes the invocation of a command against a host is that it will run whatever executable is available to that session shell. It will capture the output, it will close the binary, and then that state of that binary, if I'm changing directories or I'm executing all the other commands, is lost completely. So it behaves just identical to plink, uh, the PuTTY version of this. So let's go over and let's test that out. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be invoking a command. You can see that I'm changing directory. So I'm going like, hey, this is my current directory. Now I'm changing into temp directory. I'm looking right now at my current directory, and we're going to see that just by running one command after the other, it's going to run against batch. It's going to then take all of those actions, and the session is going to stay during that single execution. You can see home, Carlos, then we go into the folder temp. Now, if we look at my current directory right now, when I do invoke SSH command, I do pwd you're going to see that I'm back at Carlos. So the state's not there. 
Now, if you want to retain state and you want all of the capabilities of our interactive terminal, what you need to do is you need to create a stream, a shell stream. So the way we do that is here, I created the variable stream shell, and then I'm do doing new SSH, new SSH shell stream, and I'm specifying the session ID. So this created that stream object. Now let's look at what makes up this stream object. So I'm going to do get member input object stream shell. And as you can see, I have many options here. Normally when it comes to streams, um, the most basic options that you're going to be doing is that you're going to be writing to the stream and you're going to be reading from that stream. So as I write, I'm writing whatever I want to be entered or type into that session. Then I put a carriage return to specify that I did a enter. And then when that command is being executed, all of its output is being given to me inside of that stream. So I need to be careful to give it enough time for that command to run, or I have to have multiple reads to be able to capture all of the data. So now what we do is we're going to read that stream that we just created. As you can see, I have a terminal here. It says that it's for Carlos in the forum printer. I'm running as a regular user in this case. So let's just write to it. Let's just write IP address, and then I'm going to be putting that carriage return at the end. That is the end at the, that we have there. So now let's read this. And here you can see I have the IP address information for the specific host. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using another command. This command is going to be invoke SSA shell stream command. What it actually does is that it looks for a prompt. So it will keep reading all of the information, caching it into memory until it gets, the, uh, in, until it matches a regular expression for the prompt of your terminal, and then it returns all of that output to you. Here we have all of the help information. We have, I specified just a command. I specified the shell stream. And then I can specify a regular expression, which is the prompt pattern. That is the pattern of, uh, of the prompt for this specific device. The default so far works very well with iOS, works very well with Linux, which is the host that I have in my home lab environment. And it is for what I typically use this module the most is for automating actions against Linux hosts. So let's use invoke as I say shell stream. And I'm going to be running the pink man. And I'm going to be doing it 15 times. So I'm going to be sending an ICMP packet to a host 15 times. That will give me enough time to see that I'm not going to be getting the output until the command actually finishes and matches that specific prompt. So right now the command's running on the remote host. It is executing. It is doing one ping after another until it has 15 of those ICMP packets sent, and then we'll be getting the output. Here we can see the output for all 15 packets that got sent. Now, what happens if I want to, at any point, enter a secure password to take an action? The best way of doing this is, in the case of Windows, I can use a secure string. Now, secure strings in Windows are encrypted. In the case of Linux, they're not. They're just held as a special object in memory. But you need to remember that when it comes to Linux, Mac OS, and PowerShell version 7, that string is not encrypted in memory as it is in Windows PowerShell. You've been warned just in case. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be doing read host as secure string. I run this. I type my password that I'm going to be using. And now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to execute against that stream. And I'm going to do a pseudo command. And I want to become, uh, in this case, root on the host itself. And I'm going to be giving it a regex that is going to match 
when do I want that secure stream to be reading, written to the stream itself and hit enter on it. So in this case, we have a regex that is specifically for that password prompt for sudo. I get true, that means that it worked. If I read the stream right now, we're going to see that now I'm running as root. So that is the basic way that we can execute different commands using Posh SSH against a given host. And as always, I hope that you found the information useful. I'll see you guys in the next video.